Hi, my name is Nathan Manzani and welcome to Catching Steam. In today's activity, I'm going to be helping you in the biology classroom to be showing you a very engaging activity on protein synthesis that will help, help your students understand what cells are and how they work. Because too often, we're using these stationary models that don't really truly grasp everything going on inside of a cell. So in this activity, your students are going to be up, moving around, demonstrating exactly what's going on inside of a cell. And the best part is, is you're going to be able to take this activity and modify it based on what avenue you want to go afterwards. So maybe you want to use it to talk about mutations and evolution. Maybe you want to talk about viruses and cancer, or maybe just the other aspects of the organelles or the body systems. It can all kind of start with protein synthesis and how the cell works. So stay tuned. Okay, if you already understand protein synthesis really well, you can skip ahead to when I start the activity. But just, just in case you're not on the same page, I'm gonna give you a brief overview, like a really similar one as I would give to my students. So I'll just ask around, hey, what's your favorite restaurant? And someone says, I don't know, KFC. All right, so KFC. Um, let's say Colonel Sanders says you can have his recipe for his fried chicken but he just has one, one thing that you have to agree to. You can look at it, you just can't take it out of their vault because they only have that one copy, all right? So, okay, you go there and you walk into the vault with a, a piece of paper, a notebook, pencil, whatever, and then you just start writing down the recipe. And then you can walk out with that copy, all right? Well, after you walk out, you can't eat that piece of paper and expect it to taste like chicken. So you need to go to a kitchen with this recipe. So now you're in the kitchen with the recipe and now all you're missing is the ingredients. So then you start getting all the ingredients. So now you have the ingredients, you have the recipe, you have the means to cook it, and then voila, if you follow all of that code, you have a, uh, you know, that recipe for let's say fried chicken in this case. All right, you can insert your favorite restaurant there. But that's essentially what's going on inside of the cell. So you have DNA, which is essentially the code of the recipe. It's inside the nucleus, all right? So it's essentially a vault. That needs to stay in there. It can't be leaving and going into all the different kitchens. It has to stay there. So there's these uh, things called mRNA, and it will go in there and it will make a copy. And it will make a copy of that DNA. And then once it makes its copy, it will go to the ribosome. And then when the ribosome, um, that's essentially the kitchen. So now it's in the ribosome. And then these tRNA, the T stands for transfer. So the transfer RNA will bring over what are called amino acids. And those are essentially the ingredients that make the protein, All right? So now you have a copy of the code, you're inside of a kitchen, and now they are bringing over the ingredients. So it's the exact same thing as what happens here, just, you know, some small little differences. So in our activity, we're gonna replicate that. And students should be up and moving and walking, you know, back and forth between different tables to really replicate what's going on. So all you need is you need a strip of paper some paper clips, and I like to use note cards. All right, now I went ahead and printed some pieces of paper with DNA codes on them. Now, the only difference with DNA, the only difference, but one of the big differences between DNA and let's say that recipe analogy as, as I gave, is it can't make a direct copy. So it can't, if I'm reading, you know, A-G-A, -A, I can't copy it A-G-A. Think of it kind of like, because it's all happening through chemical reactions. So think of it almost like magnets, right? North magnets don't stick, like the North Pole doesn't stick to the North Pole of a magnet. North sticks to South. So you can kind of think of, hey, we need the opposite of each of these letters. So in this case, the opposite of um, A for protein synthesis is going to be U. The opposite for G is going to be C. The opposite for C is going to be G. And the opposite for T is going to be A. All right, those are like the opposites, or the north and the south pole you can kind of think of. Now, what's really neat is when it goes to the ribosome, when the, the amino acids come and they, they stick, they're actually going to do the opposite again. So how do they make the copy, the direct copy? They do the opposite in the, um, in the nucleus, then they do the opposite again in the ribosome. So that's how they make the exact copy. It's really cool. Um, but... How this activity is going to work is you, um, if you want to use my DNA codes, you can. I can attach a PDF to this video. Um, and then I also have an answer key that you can use. 
Um, but I'm gonna, if I have a class of about 30 students, I'm gonna make at least two copies of these. So I'm gonna have, you know, I have 10 codes and we can print them off, you know, so you have two of each. I cut them into strips and these are gonna be at one table. All right, one thing I forgot to mention, everyone should be in about uh, groups of three. All right, groups of three are ideal. So, but the thing is in my group, I'm not gonna be with anyone. We're gonna have three separate tables. I'm gonna be at one table. My other partner's gonna be at another table. My other partner's gonna be at a different table, okay? So my first job is to do the transcription, okay? So I'm gonna take this code and I'm going to do the opposite. Um, I'm gonna do it at in groups of three. So we call that a codon. So I see AGA, I need to do the opposite of AGA. So I have all these note cards print off that have all these letters on here. So there's all these different letters. I have a bunch of them and just wrote on the note cards. And if you run out, just throw some blank note cards on the table and throw a Sharpie there and kids can make some more. But my, my first set of letters here is AGA. So I'm gonna find a U and I'm gonna paper clip this U onto here. All right, and then I'm gonna find a, my next one is G. So then I'm gonna take a C, because the opposite of G is C. And I'm gonna paper clip this one on here. And then my next one is A on here, so I need to put a U. Okay, now I realize if you are doing, if this is happening inside of the cell, the cell is going to do the entire DNA code which can be thousands of these. Okay, they're gonna do the entire code before it goes to the ribosome. In this activity, just do one codon at a time. Just do three letters at a time. You can do up to two codons at a time, but I highly recommend doing this. So now this student, after they um, transcribe, uh, you can say decoded or did the transcription, depending on what age level you're at, um, you're gonna take this over to the kitchen or the ribosome. Now here, that student is gonna have an amino acid chart here. And then I am gonna, if I'm at that second table, so somebody walked this over and then they brought it to that second table, all they're gonna do is show it to them. So now at this point, I'm not talking. I'm just showing this to my partner at that table. And then they're gonna see UCU. They're gonna look on this piece of paper and find UCU and then they're gonna say, I need an SER. And this is short for another amino acid. So this is the ingredient. So think of it like chicken or flour or water, right? So this is the, uh, this is the amino acid. So I will tell my third, the third person in my group, hey, I need an SER. So they will have a stack of all of these cards at their table that have all the different amino acids on it. And then from there, they will take that amino acid and they will walk it over to the ribosome and I will lay it on my table, just like that. Then this person, the mRNA will walk back, do the next set of three letters here. So I'll take these off, I'll, then I'll paper clip on the next three letters. I'll walk back over to the ribosome, show them my next three letters, and then they'll say, hey, I need this amino acid, so on and so forth. Until they get, in my case, I have, I think it's uh, five codons long. So that's gonna be the length of their protein. Realize they're normally a lot bigger, like a lot longer than that. Um, but in this case, I'll just do five of these and they'll say, hey, Mr. V, I'm done. And that number here will correspond to the number on my key right here. So then I will see, okay, you have an SER, ALA, LEU, VAL, THR. Good job, you did it. Then I'll tell everyone in that group to rotate jobs. So then they get to each do their own. All right, so that's this activity. You know, simply put, you're gonna have a bunch of amino acids. You will have a bunch of these letters and some paper clips and paper. And then I will have them physically get up, moving, doing different jobs because that's really modeling what a cell's doing. It's not just sitting there doing nothing. Now, this is just a few organelles. What if we started talking about, you know, the rough ER, the lysosomes, the, the, the Golgi apparatus, the cell membrane, there's so many other uh, cool things with this. One thing I am gonna kind of mention, just, you know, while it's such an easy transition, is to talk about viruses, because all a virus does is it will take its code and put it right into the cell. 
and then your cell doesn't know any different. So it just follows this code. But instead of making the proteins that cell is supposed to be making, it's now making viruses. You know, some viruses have DNA and they will, you know, this will make it through and this first part gets done. Or some of them have just have mRNA or RNA. And then so this part's just directly put into the cell and it can go to the ribosomes. There's lots of different examples, but that just kind of shows you an easy transition. Another transition you can make is, well, what if you mess up? Well, what happens if you mess up and like, you know, let's, let's say the DNA replication part, let's say this part's messed up. Well, that can cause cancer. Or what if it messes up, you know, at, at the germline, you know, before they end up having kids? Okay, well, that can affect that organism. And if, if it's a beneficial mutation, then it might be able to help it survive long enough to reproduce and that mutation can get passed on. Okay, another thing you can do to make it a little bit more accurate and a little bit more complicated um, is instead of having these strips like this, you can have it print off like it's DNA. All right, now realize what happens with DNA. It's gonna unzip and then another set is gonna, the mRNA is gonna come and then make its copy here. So I just went ahead and did that for them and just, you know, essentially gave them the one half of the DNA. But if you wanna make it more accurate, you can do that. Another thing to make it even more accurate is obviously cells don't have voices. So they can't be yelling, I need this or I need this. So if there needs, if there was a um, UAU here, and rather than saying, hey, uh, UAU, I need a TYR, what you would do is this would just know, hey, I stick to UAU. So since I stick to UAU, I need to be the one that walks or goes over to the ribosome, and then I will drop my amino acid off. And after I drop off my amino acid, so I drop off my amino acid, and boom, here's my amino acid that can go into making my, my proteins, All right? And then if you want, you can tape like a little straw here and you can run a string through them. So then it'd make, you know, more of a protein. Um, but like I said, you can keep going to make this more accurate and more accurate. But please, please, please do not be the one that, you know, tries to figure out all of this. If you, you need this level, then they should be doing the part of the cell process that is putting these different, um, uh, you know, bases onto these amino acids. So that is a whole cell process on their own. So they should be looking at this TYR and knowing what amino acid should go here. So then that way it knows to go over and just to stick. But as you can see, that's gonna make it a little bit more complicated. So you can really push this to be whatever you want it to be. But I recommend starting off with this core of this protein synthesis activity and then challenging your students to make it more and more accurate. But it's just however you want to use it. But I highly recommend having this being your model, where students are up, moving around, modeling what's happening, because that's really what's going on inside of a cell. It's not just a stationary, hey, look, this looks pretty. They're doing some very advanced stuff going on inside those cells. All right, so hopefully this video was helpful. Please comment if you have any questions, or if you'd like to see another video where I go a little bit more in depth in some of those other let's say mutations or viruses or cancer or other things like that. So thank you for sticking around and hopefully you enjoyed this video and thank you very much.